Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Thank you. <laughs> if you haven't been to Bali less than a while, it's become a bit more interactive. So when I, when I say good afternoon, everybody, I expect a reply, or else I'll keep you in here until the rain stops. <laughs> okay, good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. You're very welcome to this service uh, for the celebration of the life of Sheridan. Sheridan and I shared many jokes and laughs together when we came to church regularly before uh, COVID and indeed before moving away to Cadiz. And I knew it was only a winner. I forgot him laughing in the congregation that we were only a sort of a good track uh, for for the sermon. And uh, it, it's, it, it's, I, I want to share only with you our, our thoughts and prayers and condolences to you and indeed to uh, the rest of, of the family at this time. Uh, today's service is a reason that there already has been a service in, in, or, or, a service in Cadiz. So today is a Thanksgiving, and indeed it's also an opportunity for you and friends and families on this side of the pond, as I said, uh, to meet up with each other and to celebrate and to remember Sharon and his life. The lovely picture in the front. If you don't have an order of service, don't worry when it comes to the hymns. I'm going to call out the hymn number, so there'll be no excuse. Uh, not to uh, sing. Uh, Sherman was sat in that third or fourth row back, so I wasn't sure how good a singer he was. Perhaps maybe after a few glasses of wine, it improved. There's no wine here this morning or this afternoon, folks, so we're just going to have to praise God as, as well as we can with the voices that God has given to us. Let's be still for a moment. We have come here today to remember before God, our dear brother Sharon, to give thanks for his life, to leave him in the keeping of God, his creator, redeemer and judge, and to commit his ashes to the ground, to comfort one another in our grief, in the hope that is ours through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We are indeed reminded in the scripture that Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, yet shall they live. And everyone who believes in me shall never die. Indeed, we have brought nothing into this world, and we can take nothing out. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord forever. We are going to stand and sing our first hymn. It's hymn number 62 in the hymn book. If you don't have an order of service, or you can share uh, just before we stand, just a few points of order. If I was saying if there is an emergency, follow me because I'll be first out. But the emergency exit is to your left, which is to my right. And if you need to use uh, the facilities, there is uh, a facility. In case you thought it was a confessional booth, it's actually, it could be a confessional booth if you wish, but it's actually a little bathroom just outside there too. If you do need to use that, you can access it by going out and around the church. Would you please stand as we worship God?
you know, some of the hymns that we sing during funeral service, sometimes will take us back uh, to other loved ones uh, that we have lost. But that hymn is a wonderful hymn that gives us the great comfort to all who have faith in Jesus Christ. And uh, never more were words so appropriate in that little line shine through the gloom. Uh, but it doesn't matter what the weather is like outside that we are here in this beautiful church, a church that was so dear to Sharon and his family, a church that they grew up in, that they were baptized in, that some of these were even married in. And it's a time uh, for that light of Christ uh, to shine in our lives. I want to pray just a, a very short prayer. Uh, in the prayer book, this is called the Prayer of Consolation. Uh, and the reason it's called that is because Jesus experienced grief as we have experienced grief and indeed as you are grieving even, even this day. And it's when he went to the grave of his friend Lazarus. Lazarus had been dead for a number of days. And quite simply, it said he wept. He was overcome with, with grief. He was overcome with the loss of a very dear friend. And quite simply, it said he wept. So I want to pray just uh, this prayer from our prayer book uh, just before uh, Ian will come forward and then uh, the rest of the family, uh, some of the family are going to lead a, a tribute indeed to Sharon. Let us pray. God of all consolation, whose son Jesus Christ was moved to tears at the grave of Lazarus, his friend, look with compassion on us, your children, in our loss. Give to our troubled hearts the light of hope and strengthen in us the gift of faith. Hear our prayers and comfort us. Renew our trust in your Son, whom you raised from the dead. Strengthen our faith that all who have died in the love of Christ will share in his resurrection, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Sharon Harden Hillis, fourth child of James Ellis Hillis and Alice Hillis May Glendinning. Sharon was born on the 4th of June 1944 and grew up in New Grove alongside Paul, Robin and Stephen, his brothers. He attended Richmond College and then he boarded at Friends Lisburn, where amongst other things he played the lead role in A Meal and the Detectives, he sang in the choir, he played both hockey and rugby. Funnily enough, he also happened to uh, talk back to the physics teacher, Herbie Martin. But that can't tell him back much. He was made head boy. At Queen's, he studied economics and was involved in the business society and went further doing a master's in international relations at the Science of Poem in Paris. As the 70s gave way to the 80s, the world worked beckoned and they worked first at Marine and Spedition in London, where he also tried his hand at property investments, including Sterndale Road and Lena Gardens in Hammersmith. However, new opportunities opened up in the freighting business, and he launched Channel Freight with his partner, Albert Lau, based in Hong Kong. What exciting times he was leaving in London with the parties and squash and tennis and everything in the early 80s. He loved current affairs and newspapers, although he was a bit optimistic about how much he could read in the available time. A friend of his, Pat Mara, has a wonderful story about his optimism. On the day he left for Hong Kong by Victoria Station, tons of time turned into a last minute rush, which ended up seeing a man running across the station, huge suitcase in one hand, piles of newspaper in the other, and a jacket flapping behind him. In Hong Kong, stories from his staff were always of what a good and generous boss he was, giving encouragement, support, and opportunities for staff to grow their skills. He was also a wonderful host in Hong Kong, with so many friends and family visiting. Personally, my memories from my family of when he visited New Grove, back from Hong Kong, were of great presence. One year ago, Gart, 
another year of chance to uh, take a motorbike around the estate in New Road. However, when Hong Kong came to an end, he moved to Hungary, and stories about it about how he somehow managed to get to see the last ballet performance of Rudolf Nureyev, despite being late in attendance to the performance. He also invested in Zucker in Tadde Calais in the north of uh, France, but was more adventuresome than profitable, with wonderful restaurant nearby that everyone who worked on the, uh, on the place um, were rewarded with a meal there. When he retired, Sheridan continued all his fashions, one of which was golf, where he played occasional mulligans on the lone golf course. He also met Lally at this point in his life, and together they made a wonderful couple with time spent between Northern Ireland and Spain. In the twilight of his years, he was very well looked after by Lally and also by carers, including Manuel, Jose, Johan and Estella, and also the care of them in Cadiz. And I would like to take the time to thank them for their patience, hard work and dedication in looking after Sheridan and making his fun years so pleasant. In summary, when I look at Sheridan, I would say he travelled the world, he tried everything, ate everywhere, he was generous, he was interesting, and he was interested in you. In short, he sucked the marrow from the bone of life. Thank you. Thank you. Would you like any friends to come? 
and a little Indian friend, Balji, said, I'd love to come. And so we took us off with Daddy, down to Europe for a long weekend. And it was a, a very impromptu but welcome uh, trip. I remember driving through London in his brown escort gear with Abba and Bonyan blasting through the windows, riding high on his shoulders as he bopped to the music of steel drums of the Notting Hill Carnival. And I also remember a certain spaghetti party in his flat in Kensington and going with Lally to see Return of the Pink Panther. We saw Watership Down in Germany, English, with German subtitles. And we visited the zoos and the transport museums in both London and Hamburg, where we also saw the Tribbetown exhibition. In Amsterdam, we saw the Rijksmuseum, the Van Gogh Museum, and also Anne Frank's house, twice. And in Antwerp, we visited we visited Rubens House and the Lace Museums. At Pisa, we went with the Nordens and with Gordon and Hinta. And we saw spe the spectacular hydroelectric plant there and were amazed to see Sheridan and Daddy eating spaghetti ice cream. <laughs> Later, I visited him in Hong Kong with Brian McConnell and when Sheridan took us to see Ocean Park, we had to have three ice creams on the way in. Um, and a traditional Chinese village and a foreign correspondence club before spending a weekend in Bangkok where we saw the floating markets, climbed steep pagodas and visited the Golden Temple. More recently, Rob and I and Valley and Tree have been blessed to spend time with Sheridan and Valley in Cadiz and that has been such a blessing. If any of this sounds familiar, that's because Sheridan was so generous with his time and he delighted in sharing his life with everyone he knew and loved. And he also celebrated our lives and achievements. He was always fun, loving and eager to share his friends and experiences with all of his family and friends as he travelled the world. And the world, for us, was a little bit richer because he was in it. Thank you. 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 Thank the old chat around coffee. Before COVID, we would have had coffee in the church, and then after COVID, we had to move to the hall. But we used to chat about the different places uh, that we'd been to, familiar places like Shad. I was there many years ago. Maybe there's a lot of Pink Panther, because that's what Peter Sellers fell in the swimming pool. If any of you remember that, do you? All right, well, I do. Okay, but that's not the sermon. You're not going that's not the sermon. But I, I want to share a few short uh, words on, on, on what you have heard. And more so than ever, the passage of scripture uh, uh, that uh, I spoke to you all about, that, that, that we shared, John 14, was very appropriate. Because most of you have experienced uh, uh, his hospitality, Sharon's hospitality. Most of you have probably here, or some of you have stayed in that wonderful place of new growth just across the way. And uh, indeed, I, I, I can see it as I look across sometimes. If, you, if you're visiting the rectory, I can take you a walk up the top of the field and you can see it's just beautiful in the sunshine and still see it uh, across the fields. But um, as, as we thought about today, we come up with this passage from John 14, and I want to read it to you. And uh, as, 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 as we find it's not the whole chapter, luckily enough, it's only the valley lesson we can get a little bit, it's just seven verses. So John 14, verse 1, it says, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me so that you may also be where I am. You know the way to the place I'm going. Thomas said, Lord, we don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And then we jump down to verse 27, and, and listen to these words. Jesus said this, he said, Peace 
I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Shared with before two days before D-Day. I don't know if you picked up on that. And I'm sure there was great celebration in, in, in the family home and even more celebration probably a couple of days later whenever the news broke that the Allies had landed to bring freedom to the rest of Europe. But one of the things I picked up about Sharon is that he was good and generous. And, and, and I just love that fact that he shared with us, that he enjoyed life. Some people uh, say, oh, you know, Christians, have you ever met some Christians who look absolutely miserable? Well, Sheridan wasn't one of those uh, people, because Sheridan enjoyed life. And see, having that faith in Christ is something that is central uh, to what we as Christians believe in. This is not the end. I know it's the end of an earthly life, but it's not the end for those of us who have that faith. Just yesterday we celebrated new life coming into the parish. In, in the font over here we, we baptised a young girl as we welcomed her into Christ's kingdom. Today we say not, not goodbye, but we say our reward to, like my friend said, it was really good, wasn't it? We say, Sure, you know, that we will we will see again our loved ones if we have Christ within. And so, in this passage, Jesus prepares his friends for a time in which he will be no longer with them. And in doing that, Thomas is the one that asks the question. I would say Thomas gets bad press. If anybody's called Thomas in here, you shouldn't be getting bad press because Thomas is the reason why we have this amazing answer from Jesus as to why and to where he is going and what he is doing for us. Because he is preparing a place for each one of us. Thomas basically said, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? I have a clue where you're going. And Jesus says quite simply, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father Except through me. Jesus also said, I have come to give you life and to give you life more abundantly. That life is to be lived abundantly on this earth as well as in the next. Sheridan was good and generous, and through his death, through his service of thanksgiving in this church, you find yourself seated on a pew in this place. Now perhaps at this stage you've already turned off for me because you don't really like long sermons. This is not a long sermon, it's a short one. Or perhaps you don't do the whole God thing. But for me, as a Christian minister, it's my responsibility, just as it was Sheridan's as a good boss, to look after the people who work for him, is that we look after you by pointing you to the way of Jesus. A tremendous truth and a tremendous promise. And one that no doubt I believe Sheridan. Well, he had to sit through all my sermons, so I would have heard the gospel preached in here week in and week out. But as you grieve, as your heart is sore today, I want you to leave here with this hope and these words that Jesus said. Because he started off and he says, do not let your hearts be troubled. This is only for a bit in life that can be eternal. And we repeat verse 27 again. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the word gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. And so, as we come to pray, we want to pray for his loved ones, for you, Larry, or his brothers, or 
our friends and his family and his nieces and nephews that are gathered here. And as we do that, we want to take a moment to think of our own lives and where we will spend eternity. This church in Valley Lesson has been a church in all the way down through the ages since this was built in 1781. It's been a place where the gospel has been preached week in and week out. And even as you look around at the windows, or uh, even at the verses uh, 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 across the arch, these are verses that give you all hope, that give you all that peace that comes from God our Father. I had a quick Google. Have you ever tried to Google yourself? That's not a rude thing, by the way. If you look up yourself online, and you see the different companies that share it as well. It's, just, it's funny seeing other names uh, from this area and from this parish uh, that all work together in, in property and the different things that they did. And it just made me smile as I see those names, those people coming together and working together. And here we see Jesus saying to each one of us, Come with me, because I will give you life. I will give you a life that's rich. And abundant. Let us pray. God of mercy and Lord of life, you have made us in your own image to reflect your truth and life. We give you thanks for sharing, for the grace and mercy that we received from you, for all that was good and true in his life, and for the memories that we treasure today. today. Lord, we especially remember those close to us. Lord, we want to pray for Valley, Lord, and his family and friends that are gathered here today. And Lord, even through the, the, the wisdom of technology, Lord, for those who are joining with us online, may they know that peace that your son Jesus talked about in this passage of scripture that we have had read to us. May they know that peace that comes from you, a peace that passes all understanding, despite what's going on in the world around us, that in just this moment, Lord, that we can receive that peace through the power of your Holy Spirit. Indeed, Lord, your, your mighty power brings good out of evil and joy out of grief and life out of death. Who can mercy and all who mourn? Give them patient faith in times of darkness and strengthen in them the knowledge of your love. Lord, we want to thank you especially for the care that he received in his latter days. Lord, in the care home, Lord, and from those who took time to care for him. Lord, you are tender towards your children, and your mercy is over all your works. So, Lord, give us each the wisdom and grace to use aright the time that is left us on earth to turn to Christ and to follow in his steps the way that leads to everlasting life. And so, Lord, we sum up all our prayers in those beautiful words you have taught us as we pray together, our Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. This service of thanksgiving is drawing to a close, but may I just uh, just draw, you, uh, draw your attention to the back of the, of the service sheet, the family that want to thank you all uh, for joining with them, and you're very welcome uh, to join with them over at, at the Crown Plaza uh, afterwards, uh, just, just, just across on the middle of Town Road, and indeed, uh, again, if you wish uh, donations, the details of where to donate to are on the back of the service sheet. Our closing hymn is a very familiar hymn, but again, a hymn of great comfort. Psalm 23, Your Lord is my shepherd. If you don't have a service sheet, it's hymn 21 in the middle. And at the end of this, I'm going to ask you to remain standing as, 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 uh, as, as ashes share, as ashes are taken from the church uh, to the grave. And you're very welcome to join with us. Down there as a
pray the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you all forevermore. Amen. Amen. Lord, let us now thy servant depart in peace.